A political storm is brewing in Canada as NDP leader Jagmeet Singh seems addicted to the same limelight that enraptures Justin Trudeau. But his latest publicity-hungry antics on Labor Day sacrifice substance for optics. While Singh slammed partisan foes before the cameras, his rhetorical broadsides failed to offer struggling workers anything beyond empty slogans. Behind the political theater, a deeper story lurks of an opposition leader lost in ideology rather than engaging the kitchen table issues confronting Canadians. For a party that claims to champion the marginalized, its purported leader offers little but viral moments and virtuous posturing. But as Singh grasps for relevance through protests and attacks, a credible alternative emerges to deliver real relief for working families feeling abandoned by liberal elites. The question now is whether Singh will abandon progressive principles for flash-in-the-pan activism, ceding pragmatism to voices speaking directly to Canadians' lived realities. For the NDP's sake, substance must prevail over optics before electoral reality intrudes. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we get into today's video, take a quick second to follow our Facebook page where we post multiple times every day reporting straight facts on Trudeau's disappointments. We will leave you the link below. Click the follow button so you don't miss our next viral post destroying Trudeau. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh showed he savors the Singh spotlight as his liberal counterpart Justin Trudeau. Rather than spending the holiday focused on bettering the lives of workers, Singh opted for easy publicity stunts criticizing his partisan opponents. Once again this Labor Day, Singh chose political theatrics over substance. Rather than spending the holiday productively uplifting Canadian workers, Singh opted for easy publicity stunts criticizing his partisan foes. His antics reveal an opposition politician seeking personal advancement more than real labor progress. Singh predictably used Labor Day as an occasion to attack both Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative leader Pierre Polyev. He slammed Trudeau's record on issues like pharmacare and criticized Polyev as an extremist. Singh joined protests and delivered campaign-style speeches and tweets targeting his rivals. We know, we know there's so much more that we need to do. We know that workers are feeling really squeezed. We know the cost of living is sky high, so we got to do a lot more. And on that front, I know you're feeling really let down by the federal government. I know that Justin Trudeau's let you down and folks feel frustrated, and I get that. What happened recently, which really for us was, was, a, was a pretty big deal, is a line in the sand that was crossed, a line that was crossed when Justin Trudeau, for our Teamster brothers and sisters that were on strike, and he forced binding arbitration, that was wrong. Not only was that wrong, what he sent was a message that if an employer mistreats the working people, negotiates in bad faith, doesn't actually honor the agreements of the workers, undermines a good process from going on, he rewarded that bad faith. He rewarded that bad faith by saying, okay, if you hurt the worker, we're going to give you what you want anyway and force binding arbitration. So we want to send a message, that's, that's, a, that's a breach of trust with working people that was wrong and it was shameful. We also want to make a message very clear though, that in the upcoming election there's going to be a choice. In a year from now, but very soon in Transcon Almoy, there's going to be a choice for people. However, his rhetorical broadsides fail to offer tangible solutions for the real economic challenges confronting Canadian workers. For a party purporting to champion labor, the NDP offered little beyond empty slogans and political posturing. Singh's aim was transparently driving a wedge between the Liberals and Conservatives while hyping the NDP as the only true progressive option. This is fine politics but does little to materially improve precarious employment, unaffordable housing, and rising costs straining working families. While attacking his opponents, Singh notably did not articulate meaningful NDP policies to address these pressing kitchen table issues. Voters care less about partisan mudslinging than concrete plans to meaningfully impact their lives. On this front, Singh came up empty. The Labor Day theatrics epitomized the NDP's decline under Singh into performative progressivism devoid of pragmatism. While adept at political stunts, he lacks the serious policy heft and executive experience to translate rhetoric into real change. But conservative cuts is not the answer. You know that here in Manitoba better than anyone. You saw the devastation of the cuts by Pallister, by Stephenson. You saw how that hurt working people. And I want to say to you, Pierre Polyev is proposing the very same thing. He wants to cut and gut the services that people need. He pretends and cosplays, puts on work boots to pretend like he knows what it's like. But when it comes down to it, you know who's your friend when you're in a fight. When push comes to shove, you know who's on your side. When the Teamsters were on strike, where was he? We he didn't hear a peep out of him. He didn't say anything. You wonder why? He didn't say anything about the Teamster strike. It turns out his campaign manager sits on the board of CPKC. 
So we know why he didn't say a thing about what was going on, because that's who he works for. We also know he voted against minimum wage multiple times. We know he fought against unions having the power to demand fair wages. We know that he is no friend to working people. He's proposed to cut pensions and to cut EI to put half a billion dollars in the pockets of big CEOs and corporations, stripping away those protections for working people. So I say to you, I say to you, we're gonna fight back with everything we have. We're gonna defend our public infrastructure, defend our EI and our pensions. We're gonna expand them and make sure seniors live with dignity. We're gonna fight to make sure it's easier to join a union, that unions have more power than the big bosses to get fair wages for their members. We're gonna fight hard, because we know people are feeling a lot of worry. We wanna replace that worry with joy. We know people are worried and afraid. We're gonna replace that fear with hope. And we know that there's a lot of greed. Big corporations and corporate greed are driving up for cost of living. We want to replace that with compassion. In contrast, Polyev did not play the opposition game on Labor Day. He instead hosted a substantive roundtable with labor leaders to hear their concerns and build trust. This maturity reflects a conservative leader focused on inclusive solutions over divisive antics. Polyev's outreach illustrates his campaign's success in engaging working people feeling abandoned by liberal elites. He speaks to their lived struggles with empathy and common-sense policies like inflation-indexed tax brackets. While Singh slings attack ads and cliches, Polyev offers respect and practical plans to ease pressures on workers and their families. His ongoing labor engagement recognizes that cost-of-living challenges transcend partisan divides. Polyev is also wisely steering the conservatives away from needless leg retentions toward inclusive, aspirational messaging that appeals across the spectrum. This reorientation aims to build a durable new political coalition reflective of Canada's changing demographics. The contrast with Singh's polarized approach could not be starker. Polyev grasps that substantive progress requires taking the pragmatic center, not the radical fringes. On issue after issue, Polyev and the Conservatives have outflanked the NDP as the true champions of working Canadians. With serious solutions over rhetoric, they are poised to expand their blue-collar support. The Conservatives' pragmatic populist platform stands the best chance of alleviating the pocketbook crunch and restoring opportunity for Canadian workers and their families. Polyev deserves credit for spearheading this inclusive new vision rather than retreating into tribalism like Singh. Of course, the New Democrats will not abandon their left-wing ideological roots, but Singh's activism risks leaving the NDP marginalized as a protest party detached from the priorities of everyday Canadians. While partisan competitors spar and posture, Polyev is prudently building the alternative leadership this country needs. His constructive labor engagement and focus on the concerns of real workers, not vested interests, point to a mature statesman ready to govern all Canadians. As Prime Minister, Polyev would succeed by staying above the political fray and delivering practical relief to the workers and families feeling left behind after years of liberal mismanagement. With vision and empathy, he is Canada's best chance at the course correction working people deserve. Furthermore, as MPs prepare to return to the House of Commons next month, there's a buzz in the air about the possibility of an early election, ignited by Conservative leader Pierre Polyev. He has been vocal, calling for other opposition parties to vote non-confidence in Justin Trudeau's minority government. Canadians cannot afford another painful, costly, chaotic, and corrupt year of Justin Trudeau, Polyev declared in a press conference in Ottawa. But, really, what's there to be happy about after Justin Trudeau's recent cabinet retreat? What changed? Remember at the beginning of the summer, after the people of St. Paul's voted against Justin Trudeau's proposed 61 cent a liter carbon tax, voted against him doubling housing costs, and driving two million people to the food bank, voted against the crime and chaos he has caused. All the PMO staffers called you in the media and said there would be heads rolling, that they would fire ministers. They called the Globe and Mail and said incompetent and discredited Christia Freeland would lose her job to Mark Carney, or at least to someone who knew how to work a calculator. And then that there would be other changes Maybe even the Prime Minister would step aside to make way and to try and bury the disastrous NDP Liberal record and put a fresh coat of paint on the broken down Liberal car. Well, what did we learn at this expensive Liberal retreat in Halifax? We learned that nothing will change. That Christia Freeland, who's been Canada's worst ever finance minister, helping to double our national debt and drive inflation to its worst in four decades, will stay in her job. Sean Fraser, 
who destroyed what was the best immigration system in the world will stay in his job. The crazy carbon tax minister, Stefan Gilbo, who wants to ban trucks, roads, and plastic straws while liberals legalize crack and heroin, he's going to keep his job as well. The disastrous justice minister, who's helped give, give Canada a 50% increase in violent crime and a 120% increase in gun crime, he will keep his job. But most important of all, Justin Trudeau, the man who is not worth the cost, announced that he will too will keep his job. Canadians cannot afford another painful, costly, chaotic, and corrupt year of Justin Trudeau. He will not quit. He must be fired. His ego, arrogance, and incompetence will always have him putting himself ahead of Canadians. He would rather allow Canadians, he would, ra Justin Trudeau would rather force an entire generation to go without homes, two million people to go to food banks, 25% of kids to go to school hungry, that he would rather that continue to be the case than to give up power. He will not quit, he must be fired. And the person to do it is Jagmeet Singh. The message was clear. Trudeau won't quit on his own. He needs to be fired. In an attempt to dismantle the Liberals' grip, letters were penned and the political chess game began. Polyev isn't holding back. He's going all in against the coalition, daring Singh to grow a backbone and take down Trudeau. He's making it clear that Canadians can't handle another year of this big government mess dragging down the economy. His political theatrics offered plenty of flash but little substance. Like Trudeau, Singh seems enamored with cameras and protests more than doing the hard work required in his influential position. For a party that professes to champion labor, the NDP offered little beyond empty slogans and posturing from its publicity-hungry leader. Voters care less about rhetorical broadsides than concrete plans to address the kitchen table issues confronting Canadian families. With more performance than policy, Singh risks leaving the NDP marginalized while his competitors propose serious solutions. Well, that's all for now. Do you think with all of this criticism against the Prime Minister, will Trudeau step down or just continue with his nonsense till the elections? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.